You're spending a third of your life sleeping, and without that third of your life, you're not able to function in the other two thirds of your life. I believe COVID uh, has certainly affected people's ability to function and feeling of wellness and well being and uh, contributed to significant fatigue. We've done a few studies on the pandemic and how it's affected sleep. So people working from home tended to actually get a little bit more sleep. But the pandemic also had an effect on mood and wellness in terms of being isolated from individuals. And that social aspect of the need of humans to socialize certainly affected mood, created a sense of exhaustion and fatigue, and also led to more depression. We've set out over the last few years to let Rush be at the forefront and the leadership of, of sleep disorders, partly through access, that is, it should not take very long to see a sleep doctor. Also, the personalized approach, individualized for your needs. We usually sit down with our folks, our patients, before a sleep study is even considered to try to understand what their complaints and symptoms are, what their risk factors might be for having an abnormal sleep study, to then decide what type of sleep study to do and what type of therapeutic uh, interventions or treatments might be possible based on those sleep study results. So we're looking for treatable conditions that can be reversed and in general improve the quality of your life. A sleep study looks at your patterns of breathing, brainwave activity, oxygen levels, body movements, to essentially try to come up with a snapshot of what your sleep is normally like. We have a, a pediatric group that will study infants, uh, and we've studied uh, people uh, more than 90 years old in our laboratory. There's two main types, laboratory-based or home-based. And in the laboratory, there are different types of sleep studies, including a study just looking at your normal sleep, or a sleep study that identifies an abnormality of your sleep and then tries to do some type of treatment. First, it's involving placing a lot of surface wires, or what we call electrodes, on the body to monitor what normal sleep is. These surface wires usually are rather comfortable and, and not too uh, disturbing of your sleep. The next step is to turn off the lights and allow you to sleep as you normally would at home, except now we have these wires monitoring your sleep. The study will usually last at least six to eight hours. After that, usually it's a bit of processing for analyzing eight hours of information. You'll return to review the results with your sleep physician or clinical provider to discuss what the results showed. So we'll look at if their sleep is normal or not through brainwave activity. We'll look at uh, people's oxygen levels and breathing patterns because common conditions such as sleep apnea or unusual body movements, unusual dreams or enactment of dreams, that is doing something in their dreams or doing something during their sleep can be identified. The treatments obviously are very personalized and for example, sleep apnea can be treated with weight loss interventions, body positional training, oral appliances, which we usually partner with dentists with, positive airway pressure devices. This is a mask that you breathe through that connects to a machine that keeps the upper airway from collapsing. We also work with partners, including bariatric surgery and ear, nose, and throat surgery because there are different treatments for uh, sleep apnea in those subspecialties also. I encourage anyone who thinks they might have a sleep problem to reach out to us or their primary care doctor or other sleep providers uh, because don't delay, it's not worth suffering through a sleep problem. Uh, there are solutions and we'll walk you down the path of, uh, of health.